Hello, Robin. I'm Hi. Robin Walker here with me. Robin, I'm going to open up with a very difficult question. How does one integrate skills into the language classroom? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that is quite a difficult question. Um, it provokes a reflection in me. How did we manage to disintegrate them? Because yes. if, if we look at skills, if we just watch people actually employing language skills in their normal lives, then the skills are integrated and to have separated them somewhere along the line has been a bit of a mistake. So that when there is speaking, there is listening. And reading frequently leads us into writing. There seems to be a natural integration and so it isn't a question of perhaps of how we do it, but what happened that they got separated somewhere along the way. I think the thing that brings them back together most naturally is remembering that we have these skills in order to communicate. And so, for example, this week I've been working with teachers in the uh, state teacher training centers here in Madrid. And uh, fun, uh, formally, my first session with them was on listening, but one of the things I said at the end of looking at this listening process was that my final activity within a sequence is my students responding to the content of what they heard and that the most logical way for them to respond would be to tell other students what they feel about what they've just listened to. This not only confirms within the group of students having this mini conversation that they've heard the same thing, they've understood the same things, but it gives an absolutely naturally integrated speaking response to some listening input. I mean, all skills are integrated, if you like. Their um, writing is not just about writing, it's having read something and seeing the actual written word alive on the page. Um, how would you, what would you tell teachers in order to bring this out? I think, do teachers tend to shy away from um, recognizing writing as part of reading and reading as part of listening and listening as part of speaking? Um, I, I don't, well, I don't know, and I'm not in a position to, to judge what's happening elsewhere. Um, I think we do tend to allow our focus on specific aspects of what is writing or specific aspects of how we can be better readers. As I say, to momentarily we lose sight of the fact that we're reading in order to communicate, in this case, to receive information. So the communication's coming off the page into us and it's, it's, it's filling some sort of information gap or it's, it's helping us to solve a problem. But it's not enough to have read. Normally we will do something with the reading. And if you just think about yourself, if you pick up a newspaper, perhaps it's a Sunday morning, you're having breakfast, you're having a long, lazy Sunday morning and you're reading the newspaper, inevitably, it, you might not go off and write, but you will talk to people you're having breakfast with as you read things. Mm -hmm. So again, there's integration. And the, the common theme for me is that we do these things and we have these skills in order to be able to communicate. So there always has to be some sort of communicative endpoint to an activity that perhaps formally was driven towards getting better at writing or becoming more efficient readers. But yes, what's the communication output from this activity? If we don't lose sight of that, if we're sure that this is the piece of communication that's going to happen in this reading class or this writing class, then the skills will integrate themselves. Great. Thank you very much, Robin, for talking to you.